Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment of our gathering together. We thank you for journey message we granted our guests, our uh, stakeholders, and every other person who is here at this moment to be part of this special program. We beseech you as we begin that you begin with us today as we will be experiencing the 44th inaugural lecture. We pray you manifest your presence in our midst. Amen. We especially want to commit to you the inaugural lecturer so that as he delivers the lecture for this hour, we will all be, uh, benefit from it, and your name will be exalted. Thank you, because we believe that at the end of this session, we will be glad that we were part of this exercise. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for the national anthem. So we are going to take cue from the sound room for the national anthem as well as the Babcock University anthem. First, the national anthem. You may have to sing along with me until they are ready. Arise, O compatriot, go. Arise, O compatriot. Nigeria called Obe to serve our Father's land with love, our strength, and faith. The labors of our heroes' path shall never be. Bob Cockhampton, please. Thank you. 
may be seated. Thank you very much. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, principal officers here present, our deans of schools, provosts, heads of departments, directors, heads of units, distinguished faculty and staff, great students, beautiful esteemed well wishers and family members of the inaugural lecturer. My pleasure to recognize every one of you and to formally welcome you to the 44th inaugural lecture of Babcock University. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite to give his introductory remarks and citation of the inaugural lecturer, amiable, charismatic, humble, distinguished pastor and administrator, Professor Ademola S. Tyre, the present vice chancellor of this institution. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics, Deputy Vice Chancellor Management Services, the University Bossa, the University Librarian Absentia, the University Registrar, Officers and Associate Officers of the University, Provost of Colleges, Deans of School, our erudite professors, heads of departments, faculty and staff of this institution, other members of the academic here present, our royal fathers, members of the university community, members of the media family and other members of the community, all those watching us online, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to the 44th inaugural lecture of Babcock University. As I usually say, inaugural lecture is a rich academic tradition in a university setting worldwide. And any university that was a salt must engage in this academic discourse. It's a time when full tenure professors will give account of their research interests over the years in a matter of one hour. It's an equivalent task, but it is doable. And so this afternoon, we have the honor of having one of our great scientists who we give us in a simplified manner. I know zoologists have a lot of uh, terminologies that are jaw-breaking, but we believe that today is going to simplify it in such a way that all of us will be able to benefit from his research endeavor over the years. And so without much ado, kindly permit me to invite to the podium the inaugural lecturer of today as I give I read his citation. While he's coming, please could we give him a round of applause as he approached the podium. Thank you. The citation. Young Isaac Olayinka Oyewole was born on February 22nd, 
1965 at Oro in Kwara State, though originally is from Ilaurangun. He attended the Seventh-day Adventist Primary School, Ilaurangun, and thereafter proceeded to Ila Grammar School, also in Ilaurangun. After finishing his secondary education, he proceeded to the Polytechnic Ibadan for his A-levels. And from there, he gained admission to the prestigious University of Ibadan for his undergraduate studies and his master studies. And later on, he proceeded to Lagos State University for his terminal degree. Young Olayinka Yewali has since worked with the Ministry of Defense from 1993 to 2000. He was a joint lecturer at uh, Babcock University from 1999 to 2000. And as a full-time lecturer with Babcock University from 2000 up to today, from where he rose to the rank of full professor in 2015. He had served this university in various capacities. He served as the head of the Department of Biosciences and Biotechnology Department from 2009 to 2015. He also was on sabbatical appointment at Oshun State University, Oshobo, from 2015 to 2016. And just like the only was a CSI, a man diligent in his work, he will stand before kings and not before me men. Because of his diligence, the government of Oshun State found him worthy and he was appointed as the provost of Oshun State College of Education in Laurangun from 2015 to 2021. And the Secretary General Committee of Provosts in the whole of the Federation from 2018 to 2021. Currently, after finishing his tenure as the provost of the Oshun State College of Education, he returned back to the workforce of Babcock University. And currently, he is serving as the head of the Department of Basic Sciences, Babcock University. Our inaugural lecturer of today is a member of several professional bodies, including American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene in Washington, DC, USA also a member of the American Committee of Medical Entomology, Washington, D.C., United States of America, an American Committee on Molecular, Cellular, and Immunoprastology, also Washington, D.C., USA. Our inaugural lecturer of today has won many, many research grants, including Ted Fund grants for institution-based research, that was in 2017. And in 2019, he won a grant as principal investigator, MIMTDR, World Health Organization Malaria Research Capacity Strengthening, in 20, 2003 to 2005, and 2006 to two, 2009 as co-investigator. Our inaugural lecturer of today, had won so many awards. Some of the, include the fellowship award he enjoyed include, Ted Fund Award for the attendance of international conference in Paris, France. ISCB African ASBSB Award for training in bioinformatics of infectious diseases in Bamako, in Mali. UNICEF, UNDP, World Bank, World Health Organization Special Program for Research and Training in Tropical Diseases Awards in India, Kenya, Mali, 
and South Africa, etc., etc. He has also the following honorary awards to his credit. Achievers Merit Award on Education, Administration, and Personnel Management, presented by the Rotary International RI District of 9125. Award of Excellence by Nigerian University's Education Student Association. Award of Recognition by the National Association of Oshun State Students, Obafemi Awolowo University Chapter. Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Local Government and Public Administration of Nigeria. And Fellow Award in Recognition of Outstanding Academic and Professional Standing and Promotion of the Arts and Science of Commerce as well as the Chartered Institute of Commerce of Nigeria. Professor Isaac Olayin Kaoyewole is a full professor of parasitology and public health entomology. He has to his credit over 30 years of teaching and research experience. He has attended 25, over 25 local and international conferences with poster presentations in some of them. He has published over 60 articles in local and international peer review journals, in addition to publishing books and contribution in book chapters. Ladies and gentlemen, our inaugural lecturer of today loves reading scientific and gospel books. He likes singing, watching football, and also wrestling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our inaugural lecturer of today is happily married to a beautiful wife, which I believe is a, she's in the audience today. Please, could you stand for recognition, the amiable wife? Thank you. And is blessed with royal children, and I believe so. Queen Elizabeth, who is a member of academic staff of Babcock University, came out in first class and is one of our French teachers. Also, Shum, Princess Anne Toyosi, and Princess Alexandra Sheyoyewale. Ladies and gentlemen, this note. Join me in welcoming to the podium our inaugural lecturer of today as he delivers the 44th inaugural lecture of Babcock University titled Parasites and Vectors, the Siamese Twins that Kills Softly. Let's give him a round of applause as he mounts the podium. Thank you. The President, Vice Chancellor, sir, kindly permit me to stand on the existing protocol, sir. It is my pleasure to stand before this distinguished assembly of intellectuals and general public with a great sense of gratitude to the Almighty God and the administration of Babcock University that has provided me with this platform to present 44th inaugural lecture of this great institution. This second work of its kind in the Department of Basic Sciences and eight in the School of Science and Technology. I'm a child of circumstance with a normal beginning. There's no gain saying that the man standing before you today is an epitome of God's grace. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to narrate my journey into the teaching world, which started some years back as a tutor in a military school, command secondary school in Ibadan, precisely in 1993 as a BSc, MSc order who was seeking means of livelihood at that time. The confirmation of the employment to the Ministry of Defense was granted in the year 2000, after seven years of sojourn as a temporary teacher. Despite all the struggle for survival at that time, I still managed to enroll for another master's degree in the Department of Guidance and Counseling, courtesy of Professor Olarinde Akimboye, to whom I'm eternally grateful for opportunity uh, and fatherly encouragement he gave to me at that time of the little confusion in the choice of career path. The certificate obtained then later qualified me for the position of provost 
at the Washington State College of Education in Lao Rogun. This appointment was made possible by the grace of God and courtesy of Chief Lee Yakande, who sought me and found me suitable for the, for, for the job in November 2015. This was a landmark in my education trajectory. In that very year, I was to be at Asia Pacific International University in Thailand for a sabbatical. Nonetheless, I could not take up the offer due to the family exigencies at that time. I later after for Washington State University, which was made possible through the intervention of Mr. Ayanle Yaino, currently the head of service of Washington State, to whom I'm also grateful for the opportunity. My passion for teaching and research in parasitology drew me back to the University of Nevada in the year 2003. To take the top master's degree in cellular and molecular parasitology, this eventually paved the way for me to, to pursue my PhD degree in parasitology and public health entomology in 2011. What a journey, interesting indeed. To God be all the glory. Introduction. According to the book of Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Behold, it was beautiful, and the Lord, the Lord God created man in his image, and gave him dominion over everything he has created. Genesis 1 27, 28. The Lord, the Lord God puts man in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it, Genesis 2, 15. Man was in constant fellowship and communion with his maker in the beauty of holiness. The environment was highly hygienic in the perfect order, completely devoid of parasites and diseases of any kind. Such was the picture of the serene and beautiful environment where man dwelt, until iniquity was found in him. Thereafter, man lost his state of perversion, holiness of life, and sanitized environment. Man willfully and purposely polluted the environment and made it no friendlier than what it was initially meant to be. Origin of parasite. The word parasite has its origin in the Latin word parasitos, a derivative of the Greek word parasitos from para and citos, meaning green food. Parasites must have evolved as a result of biological and geolo geological changes. The parasite parasitic mode of life could have been adopted for the purpose of adaptation to the existing changes in the environment which could also be the sequence of disobedience to the environmental norms. Another school of thought states that parasites might have emerged very early in the history of life on the earth when primordial microorganisms learn to survive inside other cells that they have invaded, either passively, e.g. by phagocytosis, or actively, e.g. by penetration. Theoretical and conceptual definition of keywords. Paras parasites, parasites are organisms, animals and plants that depend on other organisms host for nutrient, shelter, and support. Parasites of humans include protozoa hermits and ectoparasites. These are responsible for many diseases and are transported, transmitted to their host, most of through, through the ingestion of uh, contaminated food or water or soil, or through the bite of an arthropod, e.g. fly or tick, which can act as an intermediate host and a vector. Table 1A and 1B outline the classification of parasites. Parasitology is a branch of biology, dealing with parasites and parasitism, especially among animals. The term was first used in 1870 by extension, is the study of the parasite and its host and the relationship between them. Medical parasitology traditionally has included the study of three major groups of, para of animals, parasites uh, as defined. Vectors, vectors are living organisms that can transmit inf infectious diseases between humans or from animals to humans. Epidemiology of disease and surveillance as class as defined. Transmission of diseases. Infectious agents can be categorized by how they move from one host to another and whether this involves any intermediate host or environment. Some pathogens spread without spending significant time in the environment. Example of being uh, example being influenza or sexually transmitted infections. Vector borne diseases in, in contrast rely on additional hosts for transmission of to a biting insect. Parasitic diseases. Parasites are generally responsible for parasitic diseases. Those that are endemic to Africa are caused by protozoa and emits, which include amoebiasis, gardiasis, trichomoniasis, leishmaniasis, trypanosomiasis, malaria, schistosomiasis, fasciliasis, tiniasis, loasis, cystosarcosis, oncosarchiasis, astosomiasis, strongloidiasis, draculiasis, and filariasis, as well as elevatiasis. A number of factors are responsible for their endemicity, some of which are one, conducive climatic conditions, such as temperature, rainfall, relative humidity, two, presence of diverse animals as host, three, the trinity of poverty, ignorance, and poor infrastructure, number four, laughter, high, poor hygienic condition, pathogenic effect of parasitic parasites on the host, 
Despite the fact that it is not the intention of parasites to kill the host, its effects on the host are often detrimental. Parasites injure their hosts in a number of ways, the extent of which may vary from one parasite to another. For example, Entamoebiae solitica may cause erosion or solution of the tissue of the intestinal wall through the production of proteolytic enzyme. While schistosoma sacaria secretes substances which cause inflammation of the skin, dermatitis. Some blood sucking arthropod cause papule at the side of the bite and ingest salivary fluid, causing inflammatory reaction. For example, Anopheles mosquito injects protozoan substances from salivary gland into the host, and after the invasion of the red blood cell, symptoms of fever, which characterize malaria episode, may ensue. Ascari lumbricos, which often entangle with one another, may cause mechanical injury, such as the blockage of the intestine and appendix, as well as perforation of the gut. Mode of transmission. There are various ways by which parasites are transmitted in the environment, from man to man, animal to man, water to man, soil to man, air to man, and vice versa. Transmission aided by untidy environment and certain human behaviors. Certain parasites such as entomobile silica are shown in figure one, and guardian intestinalis are responsible for diarrhea, frequent bowel motion, offensive to with mucus or blood, their duration and weight loss in human. These parasites are transmitted by indiscriminate disposal or sewage, which result in the contamination of drinking water. Food handlers and caregivers may also soil their hands with fecal matters through unhygienic behaviors and can inadvertently transmit the cyst of the parasite to their customer or client. Others such as Negleria species, which is responsible for amoebic men meningoencephalitis in man, hookworm as the summa dodenal, figure, as shown in figure two, that causes hookworm dermatitis, udema, and erythema. Tercuris tricura, every infection may lead to local inflammation, abdominal discomfort, isophilia, and diarrhea. And the Strogloid saccharalis, the treadworm, as for if you go to the, is also responsible for uh, strongloidiasis that can be contacted through contaminated soil. It is also important to know that parasites such as Negleria species, Schistosoma worms, Guinea worm, Cryptosporidium parvum, as shown in figure four, and the Apuclor medinensis, as shown in figure five, can be contracted through unavoidable contact with polluted water, either by way of swimming, washing, and drinking. Ascar Ascaris, Tosocaria canines, and tick cati are common intestinal parasites of dogs and cats, usually kept as pets, leading to tosocariasis. Transmission is, tr is through contaminated soil consisting of effective herbs and larvae. The presence of dogs, particularly pu puppies, in a household and pica death eating is the pr principal factor for women's disease. Organs commonly affected are the eye, brain, liver, lung, uh, where infection can cause permanent fissure rhinologic or other tissue damage. Transmission aided by promiscuous lifestyle. Trichomonas vaginalis is responsible for trichomoniasis, or trick, which is a common sexually transmitted infection, STI. Trick spread during sexual intercourse in smear and vaginal fluid. Its name comes from the parasite trichomonas vaginalis, which causes uh, infection. Anyone who has sex can get trick. Only about 30% of people have symptoms. When you, you have an infection, you can give trick to someone else through one, vaginal penile or vaginal vaginal intercourse, through anal sex, through oral sex, through genital touch, skin to skin contact without ejaculation. Caution, abstinence from illicit and unprotected sexual activities is advisable. Human body is temple of the Holy Ghost. It will be kept, kept clean and holy. As well in 1 Corinthians 6, 13, 16 to 19. Figure six shows the location and life cycle of trick. Parasite transmitted through consumption of animal flesh. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, I get this aspect to be of interest to the Babcock University community, Adventists, and others who have adopted the vegetarian lifestyle. Apart from the parasite that can, that can be transmitted through fecal oral route, either by eating or drinking contaminated food or water, that other parasites that are transmitted through the consumption of certain animal flesh and seafood. There is a serious craving in the world today for animal flesh. It's a, it's just, either as a component of fast food or in the form of barbecued meat or sticks, which are most often insufficiently cooked. The consumers of such delicacies are often careless about the source of the animals from which the flesh is produced. This may be a more dangerous situation in the tropical Africa, where animals to be slaughtered for meat are hardly inspected by veterinary doctors or officials. Even though occasionally such animals are inspected, nevertheless, the animals discovered to be infected are still sometimes more good for slaughter for human consumption. 
it is not unlikely that a higher percentage of, of, percentage of animal for human consumption in the developing world are deceased compared to what is obtained in the Western world. This is simply due to the environment in which these animals are raised, which is often contaminated with sewage and fecal materials. Such environment make it possible for the parasites, hexists, and larvae to find their ways into the animals, which often graze intensively with little or no guidance or, or restriction on polluted grasses and water. Such animals receive little or no medical attention during the period of, being, of their being raised to the time of slaughter. If the meat produced from such animals is not thoroughly cooked, then it can serve as reservoir of infection to the consumer in the community. Most of the people often follow the law of appetite rather than the commands of God guiding our appetite and the choice of diet. One of the ways to know what is good for a complex body is to consult the one who made it. Leviticus 11, 3 to 11, and Isaiah 66, 17. I have discussed some of the parasites that can be transmitted through the animals. Rare for, for meats and those are kept as domestic pests. Heterophytes, heterophytes, as shown in figure seven, is a small fluke whose sacaria infects freshwater fish, e.g. mullet, moji. Man becomes infected by eating infected fish raw, smoked, or half cooked. Paragonima westermani, as shown in figure eight, is a long fluke for which man and other animal such as pig, cat, rat, dog, tiger, beaver, wolf, and, and fox, acts as a reservoir. Man particularly becomes infected after eating raw, or that cook crabs and crayfish, which often serve as the second intermediate, intermediate host, into which the sacaria or the parasite penetrate to form the infective metasacaria. Pathogenic effects of parasites are as enumerated in the ample. Tenia saginata, as shown in figure nine, is the beef tape worm for which cattle serve as an intermediate host through ingestion of the eggs of the worms on the pasture. Man becomes infected when he eats raw or partially cooked beef in form of sticks or barbecue, which is, is more delicious in these forms than when properly cooked. The Vlobatrum latum, as shown in figure 10, is a broad fish tape worm of man. Man becomes infected when he eats the infected plankton fish, feeding fish or the larger fishes, which are smoked or partly cooked. Triclena spillari, as shown in figure 11, is essentially a domestic or synotropic parasite known to cause cyanosis, transmitted to man by the ingestion of infected pork that are raw or partly cooked. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, part of my research work on parasitology is the examination of the prevalence of heterotic parasite immunodeficient HIV infected at patients, with and without diarrhea. Protocial infection caused by Entamoeba estolytica, Gardia labia, was most prevalent, closely followed by airmate infection caused by hookworm, as shown in Table 2. Oh, you only have in touch. Uh, 2005. Another investigation was carried out in prevalence of STI pathogen in HIV infected and non infected women to examine its possible implication in the acquisition or transmission of HIV in Nigeria. The samples were screened for the presence of trichomonas vaginalis, candida cervicans, post uh, cells, and bacterial phaginosis. For your later 2010, the result is shown on table 3. Parasites and factors. Are, this aspect of, is of particular interest to this lecture as it concerns with the parasite transmitted by other organisms, referred to as vectors. Parasites and vectors are the two culprits described here using the phenomenon of a Siamese twins, which may be very difficult to separate as they relate symbiotically, causing illness and gradual death in man and his animals. Major parasites of public health concern and their vectors are listed in table four. Vector bone protozoan diseases. Vector bone protozoan diseases constitute a serious threat to women and the socioeconomic status of the people particularly in the tropical region, where poverty, ignorance, together with factor favorable climates are the dominant factor. Other militating factors are the human behavior, cultural practices, customs, traditions, and inadequate social amenities. Protozoan endoparasites, such as the malaria parasite in the genus Plasmodium and sleepy sickness parasite in the genus Trypanosoma, are the effective stages in the host blocks which are transported to new hosts by biting insects. The effectors are mostly hematophagic arthropods, such as flea, lice, ticks, and mosquitoes, as shown in figure 12A and 12B. Mosquito-borne diseases. Mosquito-borne diseases such as malaria, dengue fever, filariasis, yellow fever, chikungunya, West Nile virus, Zika virus, and other aboviruses are the leading causes of human morbidity and mortality in sub-Saharan Africa. With so many as one million deaths attributed to them yearly, mosquitoes also have a vector for several diseases of domestic animals, and their bites can cause several skin irritation. Apart from their role in transmission, they also have a high nuisance value. The most crucial disease transmitting and nuisance causing mosquito in sub-Saharan Africa belong to the genus Anopheles, Coolis, and the Hades. 
epidemiology of malaria and control strategy. Epidemiology of malaria. Malaria is a public health problem, most especially in the tropical countries where majority bear the burden of the disease. It is one of the six killer diseases in the world today, and it has been estimated that 40% of the world population is at risk, and 500 million people suffer from the disease annually. About 2 million mostly children under five years and pregnant women die from malaria-related illness each year, and nine out of 10 cases are found in sub-Sahara Africa. Malaria situation in Nigeria. Malaria is endemic in Nigeria. While it is a major cause of mobility and mortality, it occurs throughout the country with seasonal variation in different ecological zones. At least 50% of the population suffer from at least one episode of malaria each year. The disease is commonest cause of outpatient attendance across all age groups. The Federal Ministry of Health record show that malaria is responsible for 63% of the disease reported in healthcare facilities across the six geographical zones, leading to 25% of infant mortality, 30% of childhood mortality, 11% of maternal deaths, with about 47% occurring during pregnancy. Strategies for malaria control. Nowadays, chemotherapy and vector control are the sole effective attempts to mini minimize disease body. That's why the major attempts over the past century to control malaria, part of the recourse encounter in this regard are due to phenomena of multiple drug and uh, insecticide resistance, which, uh, which affects virtually all intervention currently. Moreover, the development of vaccine against this remains elusive. This has necessitated the need for integrated approach to malaria control. Previous documents on malaria control strategy have shown that precise identification of species is necessary to avoid misidentification of non-vector species. In order to conduct an efficient vector control program, in Nigeria, 35 anopheles species have so far been identified as shown in Table 5. Why? Figure 13 shows int on the identification of both adults and larva of anopheles mosquito. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, it is my pleasure to present the result of our investigation and identification of some of these species in the rainforest, mangrove, and savanna ecosystem in Nigeria. We examined the species composition and role of anopheles mosquito in malaria transmission in the rainforest of Ogo State, coastal ecosystem of Lagos, Lagoon, and forest savanna transition ecosystem of Oyo State. The results show that five anopheles species were identified from four communities in the rainforest ecosystem. These were Anopheles gambia, Anopheles arabiensis, Anopheles funestus, Anopheles muscheti, Anopheles disonai, as shown in Table 6, page 34 of the booklet, for your wallet, 2005D, 2005E, 2007A. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, I wish to state unequivocally that this is the first report of Anopheles muscheti, Anopheles funestus, in the forest ecosystem of Ogun State, and this has made Akakarema an international study center for the two species. The study is the forest in the forest savanna transition ecosystem of Oyo State, and it's where a total of 10 Anopheles species, including two predominant major vector groups, Anopheles gambiae SS and Anopheles funestus SS, as shown in Figure, in figure 7, Oduola et al. 2012. The study of the species are composition of the role of Anopheles mosquito in malaria transmission in the coastal ecosystem of Lagos Lagoon in Badagri showed the presence of three species, Anopheles. This were Anopheles gambiae, Anopheles mela, and Anopheles nelai as shown in figure 8 or you will let all 2010b. In all the aforementioned ecosystem, ELISA-based analysis indicated that Anopheles Gambia SS, Anopheles Arabiensis, Anopheles Funestus, Anopheles Melas, Anopheles Mucheti, Anopheles Dizonai were the main vectors of malaria in the study area, with overall P phosphorus infection rates of between 4.6% and 6.5%. All the species, species added also maintain relatively high entomological inoculation rates indicating their prominent role in malaria transmission in the study area. <coughs> Eliza for blood mean sources showed that Anopheles gambi, Anopheles funestus, Anopheles melas were highly anthropophagic, that is, they feed on human blood. Anopheles arabiensis and Anopheles lesionae were both zoophagic, since they feed actively on cattle blood outside the house. The result of the molecular method of identification are shown in figure 14, page 36 and 37. For a study on the behavior of Anopheles mosquito, an a longitudinal study was carried out on the resting and feeding behavior of major Anopheles species in the rainforest zone of Nigeria, constituted both indoor and outdoor collections. The following species, Anopheles gambi, Anopheles funestus, Anopheles melas, were found to be endophilic, that is, they rest indoor, and endophagic, that is, feeding indoor. However, Anopheles gambi and Anopheles funestus were more endophagic, with a larger part of their biting occurring indoors. 
Meanwhile, another the Arabian seas and another the Bunchetai were more esophagic and esophilic, with over 60% of their biting occurring outdoor for your wallet at all, 2005-2007. Malaria prevention. Malaria prevention involves avoiding bite by parasite carrying an overly mosquito or preventing disease by using anti malaria drugs. In preventing malaria, focus is more on the vector and parasite. Prevention of bites from anovelis mosquito include the use of protective measures such as insecticide treated net, indoor residual spray, and pesticide to reduce sources of larvae. As of today, resistance of anovelis mosquito to this measure is posing a serious threat to their sources. Therefore, the soldiers need to curb this threat in order to guarantee success of these strategies. Anopheles resistance of, uh, to insecticide. Factually, all vectors and pest control programs depend on the use of insecticide formulated as larvicide, adulticide, baits, or insecticide impregnated bed nets. However, in the recent time, development of insecticide resist resistant toxicologic and environmental considerations had constituted a great threat to this control measure. Our research team has been working to unravel the mechanisms of resistance in anopheles mosquitoes to this insecticide. Some of the outcome of our findings include the identification of two main mechanisms of resistance, high target site KDR mutation and metabolic alterations in different parts of Nigeria. However, a subsequent study has established the absence of knockdown resistant KDR mutation in Anopheles Kulisi, then known as a molecular M form. There was a suggestion for the possibility of a different resistant mechanism in this rate. However, with the aid of microarray technology, a case of multiple re uh, parietal resistant mechanism in a single population of malaria Mosquito uh, malaria in Nigeria has been reported by our team. I will allow it all 20 years. In Nigeria, the first case of parietal resistance in anopheles was reported by Wolola et al. 2002 with cross resistance to the organochlorine DDT. Subsequent investigation by our team has shown the spread of resistance of this species to various insecticides in different parts of the country. In our study of distribution of knockdown genes associated with parietal resistance in MNS molecular form of anopheles gambia in Nigeria, we examined the knockdown resistance, KDR gene associated with pyrethroid and DDT resistance in Anopheles Gebe at 30 localities across Nigeria. Results show that mosquito sample at seven localities were susceptible to parametry, detametry, and DDT. Anopheles Gebe from six other localities in transitional and Guinea savanna ecotype were resistant to this insecticide. The KDR gene was found only in the molecular S form, including area where both forms were sympatric. The overall KDR frequency was low, less than 47% in forest, 37 to 48% in the transitional, and 45 to 53% in Guinea savanna. The, the data suggests that parietal resistance in Anopheles Gabe in Nigeria is not as widespread when compa compared to the neighboring West Africa countries. The dynamic of northern parietal insecticide resistance analysis in the field population of Anopheles Gabe in southwest Nigeria were also studied. This shows that changes in the susceptibility resistance status for the molecular M and S form of Anopheles Gambia and the frequency of the Arcadia alleys from 2002 to 2005 are shown in Table 9. Another study involved the epidemiology of malaria and insecticide resistant body in Nigeria. The mosquito sample from all zones were susceptible to diagnosis dose of insecticide tested, although a significant level of needs or resistance was recorded in particularly in forest savanna mosaic and green savanna. Results are shown in Table 10 to 12. The insecticide resistance status of Anopheles Gambia breeding in stagnant water bodies in Lagos, Nigeria, were also uh, investigated. The results show that the Anopheles Gambia were more substance to parametry than lambda salatrin. This is the first report on resistance of Anopheles Gambia to lambda salatrin in Nigeria. The report also provided earlier evidence of Anopheles Gambia adapted to breeding in stagnant water in Nigeria. This level of insecticide resistance is a concern to the epidemiology of human of Obama malaria, all of the day 2013. In our investigation of the impact of permanent 3.0 on etymological indices in an area of parietal resistance, Anopheles Gambia is south western Nigeria. Based on etymological indices across eight villages in Rema North local government of Ogu State, provided the basis for selection of the three villages, Ilara, Irolu, and Ijebu, Ijesha Ijebu, for comparing the efficacy of permanent 3.0 and permanent 2.0, as well as our untreated polyester net as a control. The study confirms the efficacy of PN 3.0 in reducing malaria trans transmission compared to parietal only LNS in the presence of malaria vector with P450 based metabolic resistance mechanism. I will allow it all 2017. Another study we investigated the susceptibility status and knocked down detail of local anopheles mosquito species using World Health Organization pesticide scheme whoopies recommended insecticide. 
And open this gambit, we were found to be resistant to lambda cell artery, permethrin, theta methrin, and DDT. Was susceptible to phenytoin trion and medioca for a wallet 2018, as shown in table 13. Understanding the mechanism used by anopheles mutritus to, to survive insecticide exposure is key to managing the existing insecticide resistance and developing more suitable insecticide based malaria vector control intervention, as well as other alternative integrated tools. In this regard, the molecular basis of ametrin, DDT, and the adrenaline resistance in Ophelis funestus and Takakarema was investigated. Biopsy were, were conducted in three today old adult Ophelis funestus mosquito for ametrin, DDT, the adrenaline susceptibility test. The molecular mechanism of mosquito resistance to this insecticide were investigated using macquarie and reverse transcript PCR techniques. Results are discussed in page 42 and 43. In part of this report on the safety of Nigeria and resources management of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our research has demonstrated the susceptibility pattern of anovalis mosquito to different classes of insecticide in Nigeria. We have also featured the suitability, safety, and the environmental impact of some of these insecticides. For instance, in May 13, as reported by Professor Walola, some lobbyists influenced the Federal Ministry of Health and proposed the use of DDT for use in our spray to eliminate malaria in Nigeria. Through our research, through our research work, we provided a persuasive local evidences of widespread DDT resistance across the country. We stated reason why an insecticide listed as an organic pollutant under the 1974 Stoking Convention should not be considered for use in Nigeria. This singular act, with follow-up documentation, persuaded government and saved the country several billions of naira intended for procurement of these harmful chemicals. This is the power of systematic investigation and documentation. In my view, such evidence-based research is needed in all field of health research in Nigeria, Awolola 2017. Alternative to chemical synthetic insecticide. Most vulnerable group in Nigeria, in malaria endemic area, constitute people in the rural environment who often have little or no access to modern medicine. Hence, there is an urgent need to find alternative therapies that, don't, that are not only effective against resistant malaria, but are also available and affordable to this vulnerable group who are not econ economically buoyant to afford expensive orthodox med medicine or have no access to modern health facilities. We are summing in the in vivo activity of the aqueous and the metabolic extract of Catonia diversifolia on Plasmodium bergeri and repellency of the volatile oil or the mosquito. Both aqueous and metabolic extracts were more effective when ad administered before the onset of the infection, probably indicating the time dependency of the anti-malaria effect. The volatile oil extract show higher repellent effect on anovalis gambi at higher concentration. However, its repellent and protective effect at various concentration on all other species of mosquito tested cannot be underestimated. For your wallet, it's all 20 The larva, larvicide activity of the essential from Phalanthus amaros against this, against three species of, of mosquitoes were also investigated. For your wallet, it's all 2010. Epidemiology and perception of malaria in rural areas and urban communities in Nigeria. Mr. President Francis Losa, it is worthy of note that individuals' ability to suspect malaria in the presence of fever and prompt treatment with appropriate medication has important consequences for healing and survival in malaria endemic areas. The clinical menace caused by malaria is preventable where people in the endemic areas are adequately educated on its causes, management, pre prevention, and control. We examine the following. One, knowledge, attitude, and practice cap of malaria in a rural community in Oshun, Oyo, and Ogu State. Two, attitude to malaria prevention, treatment, management strategies associated with prevalence of the disease in a Nigeria urban center to know the level of compliance and ability to detect malaria. This study investigates the basic factors responsible for human mosquito interaction, attitudinal consequences of malaria, treatment pattern, and management strategy in an urban center. Result as the source on pages 47 and 48. Malaria in urban area. As in most parts of West Africa, malaria transmission in rural areas of Nigeria is generally intense, perennial, and well documented. This is not the same in urban area, where exploitation of natural resources and development, activ uh, development activities are common phenomena. Our study attempts to assess malaria effectivity in Lagos City, or the impact of climatic change and urbanization. The epidemiology implication of this study include the effect of ecological changes of factors, species abundance or composition, which may lead to high level of malaria transmission and infection, as discussed on page, on page 49. 
physical chemical characteristics of Anopheles uh, breeding site. Mosquitoes exploit almost all types of lentic aquatic habitat for breeding. Larvae of Anopheles mosquito have been found to thrive in aquatic bodies, such as fresh or salt water marshes, mangrove swamps, rice fields, grassy ditches, or edges of streams and rivers, and small temporary rain pools. Several species prefer habits with vegetable, vegetation wide, some breed in open sandy pool. A few species breed in three holes or leaf hazards or some plants. We examine under the laboratory condition some of the physical chemical parameters germane to the survival of growth, development, and fecundity in a novelist gambit as uh, discussed. Research collaboration with colleagues from other disciplines within and outside Nigeria are provided both technical and supervisory support and contribution to research projects of other colleagues' research work outside my core area of specialization, as evidenced in some of the research publications as listed on pages 51 and 52. My contribution to Babcock University. I consider it a great privilege to serve in this great and God's own university where failure is not an option. I thank God who has counted me worthy to be part of the success story of this prestigious university. I joined the service of Babcock University as a part-time lecturer in 1999 to teach values to the last set of ASWA students and later as a full-time lecturer in 2001. Since then, I've been contributing in various capacities as listed subsequently. Number one, as the foundation head of the Department of Medical Laboratory Science, which was then some other Department of Biosciences and Biotech Biotechnology. I work with other professionals, such as Professor Femi Sutusa, Mr. Bafemi, Dr. Dayu Adeosho, and Professor Famodu from University of Benin of Blessed Memory to develop the curriculum for the program. Today, the program is thriving excellently. To God be the glory. Mr. President, First Chancellor, sir, it is my prayer to be recognized and accorded the honor as a pioneer head of that department. Two, I've also, also served as head of biosciences and biotechnology for three consecutive terms from 2009 to 2015, during which full accreditation was obtained for microbiology program. My channel also witnessed the commencement of postgraduate program in microbiology. Three, I'm the current head of the Department of Basic Sciences, and again through harmonious working relationship with my colleagues in the department, full accreditation was obtained for chemistry and physics with electronics programs in the year 2023 by the NUC assessment program. Qualified and competent staff have been employed, and this has enhanced the quality and standard of teaching, and has also made all our programs, mathematics, biology, chemistry, and physics with electronics, more formidable. More formidable. More staff offices have been constructed, and laboratory are well equipped, a big thanks to the administration. My tenure as head of the department has witnessed tremendous promotion of staff from lecturer to, to professor chair, and other cadres among the non-teaching staff. We are working tirelessly to expand our programs to increase student enrollment and to start off our postgraduate program anytime soon. Additional contribution as listed on pages 53 and 54. My contribution to academic and international community. As provost of Shul State College of Education in Laurogon, 2015 to 2021, the following are my achievements during the period. Led the institution successful reaffirmation of accreditation on site visit and serve as chief author of the institutional self-study institutional portfolio general compliance document. Initiated and chair the committee for the review of the institution's strategic plan, collaborate with the faculty member to update and revise uh, the staff and student handbook. Initiated the creation of additional directory, including academic planning, exams and records, institutional effectiveness, research and publication, quality assurance, management information system, and external programs. Initiated various programs in support of staff development and capacity building. Reactivated our working staff interest in research and attract funds in support of researchable proposals. Increase the enrollment through the robot relationship with the NUC, NCC, and JAM, among others as stated. I also serve as Secretary General Committee of Provost in Nigeria from 2018 to 2021, during which committee was better organized with concrete achievement. I also serve as Senior Assessor for Leadership position at Lagos State University in 2020. Accreditation physics team member to Oak Park University in USA in 2013. I also serve as historian and peer reviewer for some scientific journals as listed. Collaboration and research activities and publication from both local and international grants include one, test for grant for institutional-based research, 2017 and 2019, MIMTDRWHO Malaria Research Capacity Strengthening Grant, 2005 to 2005, 2003 to 2005, and 2006 to 2009 as a co-investigator. Traveling fellowship, international training, training and delivery sponsored by UNICEF, UNDP, World Bank, WHO Special Program for Research and Training in Tropical Diseases, TDR, as traveling grant 
to South Africa, Kenya, and India. Others are traveling grants received from European and Developing uh, Country Clinical Trial Partnership to Tanzania Global Health Council, travel to United States of America. Awards and honor and distinction obtained as listed on pages 56 and 57. Recommendation one, health promotion and uh, education awareness. World Health Organization defined the health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well being, and not merely the absence of diseases or infirmity. This is a dream that most of the tropical countries, particularly those in the rural community, which makes up about 75% of the population, decide to achieve. However, due to the high level of illiteracy and uh, poor education regarding the causes and most of the uh, transmission of some of the parasitic diseases in this part of the world, the spread of these diseases becomes prevalent. There is the need to make concerted efforts to promote awareness with regards to healthy lifestyles, both at the individual level and through established institutions such as schools, religious organizations, and other social organizations. Health policies. People-oriented health policies should be formulated by the government to target improvement of the health profile of low-income honey and rural dwellers, while those of the urban population sh should never be neglected. The federal government of Nigeria should reorganize and reestablish a functional and sustainable primary health care system. The poor people in the rural areas are more prone to parasitic diseases and they are only hope for medical attention at the primary health centers. Hence, all efforts both from the government and non-governmental organizations should be directed towards health care delivery, particularly in the rural areas. Basic infrastructure. The availability of basic infrastructure, such as pipe bomb water or bowel, modern waste disposal system, recreation facility for children, and modern housing scheme will greatly reduce transmission of waterborne and other related diseases. Government should, as a matter of necessity, ensure that these basic amenities are accessible to the people at all levels for a better life and prevention from affordable parasitic diseases. Research funding, number four, funding from governments, local and international organizations for meaningful scientific research is necessary to curb the menace of parasitic diseases. State of the heart laboratory with functional equipment are required to support researches that address local problems, threatening the well-being of the people. Proper funding mechanism should be adopted to address research activities on new and improved disease control strategies with serious emphasis on accountability and professionalism. The Ministry of Health should appropriate reasonable allocation for disease prevention and control. The national health budget should be improved to meet the international declaration of 50% pledge to which Nigeria is a signatory. Number five, intervention strategy targeting the factors. Factor surveillance and control strategies are critical components of the global targets, set for control, elimination, eradication of neglect neglected tropical diseases, and malaria, whose transmit cycle relies on vector or intermediate host. This is important, particularly in formulating national policy and strategic plan for NNS distribution. Adequate information on insecticide resistance and resistance mechanism is required for the guidance on the selection of sites for large-scale vector control using LNS and indoor residual spray. Area with known parietal resistance mechanism should be mapped out using all existing data for subsequent distribution of LNS and application of our IRS. Threshold, the, there should be continual periodic monitoring of vector control intervention to ensure the efficacy, effectiveness, and sustainable coverage. Number five and number six, control of the vector breeding site. The prevalence of vector bond diseases is a function of the environment. Certain geoclimatic factors, such as temperature, water quality, and moisture, are determinants of the presence of vector breeding site, density, adult longevity, and vector capacity. Any change in these climatic factors can create an environment which may either create or reduce vector breeding site. Understanding the inter interrelationship of the environment, vector parasitic diseases, and demography will help in determining appropriate control measures, particularly in a rapidly changing environment. Number seven, malaria management. Prompt diagnosis is essential for timely treatment and recovery from the clinical cases. After noticing some symptoms of malaria, the patient should seek medical attention immediately. However, the cost of treating an episode of malaria may be outside the reach of more vulnerable people who may also have little or no access to medical personnel. Government should put into consideration this group of people by ensuring the availability of cheaper and affordable drugs compared in cost to chloroquine, considering the number of episodes of malaria explained by an individual annually. 
and the high cost of the first line drug currently in use, that is acetamicillin based combination therapy, ACT, more medical personnel should be employed to make the WHO establish minimum threshold of one doctor to 600 patients ratio, that at the current ratio of one doctor to 4,000 or 5,000 patients. It is also expected that government and partners should supply the anti-malaria commodity, either free or at a subsidized rate to the poor masses. Number eight, national malaria control program should be given more support and resources to control surveillance program to identify and document the spread of resistance to anti-malaria and insecticide treated nets in Nigeria. Acknowledgement. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, my special appreciation goes to the Almighty God who has been my sustainers and pillar of light to my path, which brighten each step every day. I praise him for making this 44 inaugural lecture possible in his time. I'm mostly grateful to my parents, late Pa Abraham Akande Oyewole, and Mama Princess Dokas Moyoadi Abike Oyewole, to my uncle, dad, and mentor, Pa Joseph Adeleke Ola, and his loving wife and children, some of which are here, some of whom are here, and the Olalu dynasty, as well as my in law, the Inwokoma family. My sincere gratitude goes to my sibling, Edda Gabriel Oyewole, and Solomon Oyewole, their wives and children. I appreciate the pres President Vice Chancellor of this great institution, Professor Ademola Tayo. He is indeed humility personified, a gentle pastor to fall. I appreciate God in your life and your administration, sir. Thank you for the opportunity given to me to present this lecture, sir. I also thank other principal and associate officers of the university. I'm appreciative for the support and contribution of the following leaders to my career path in Bako University as listed on page 61. I'm exceedingly grateful to Professor Oluse Yudutola Oduyoye for his love and care toward my family during our sojourn in Ghana. I appreciate his, his encouragement and assistance in ensuring I come back to Nigeria and take an appointment at Bako University. I cannot forget to express my sincere appreciation to Professor O. Adeba Wajo, the then head of the Department of Basic and Applied Sciences, who recommended me for the employment. I thank friends and senior colleagues as listed on page SMART for their su support. The role paid by all the provosts and college of colleges and deans of school is well appreciated. Many thanks to all the staff in the Director of Academic Planning, Office of Institutional Effectiveness, Research and International Cooperation, and others, thanks for your contribution to Babco University. I also acknowledge all the heads of the department and very special thanks to my colleagues in the Department of Basic Sciences. I recognize you all. I especially appreciate the encouragement from Ed Akande for his continual assistance that Prof. Enyilokon and Lo and Bio truly Emilokon. I thank God for your prophecy fulfilled and sincerely brother love. I'm especially give to the inaugural lecture committee. Emeritus Professor Michael Omolewa, Professor Gabriel Alegweleye, Professor Grace Tayo, Professor Dora Akin Boye, Professor Pai Olan Rewaju, and Dr. Kola Yodele for their effort to put the material for this lecture in proper perspective. I wish to especially acknowledge the wonderful Minister of Emeritus Professor Ambassador Michael Omolewa, COA, the 32nd President of General Conference of the United Nations Education Science Week and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. I appreciate your unprecedented, unprecedented humility, spiritual acumen, mentorship, and fatherly roles. To Mr. Kende Okunsoya, the then Faculty Officer of Science, University of Ibadan, for granting me admission to the University of Ibadan. I thank all my mentors who have, in one way or the other, contributed to my success story from primary to secondary school and to the university level, as listed. I'm, mostly, I'm most grateful to my indefatigable PhD supervisor, Professor Comfort Adejoko Ebidako. I was so honored with your comments in your inaugural lecture, where you said, and I quote, Professor Yowale, the supervisor-student relationship has been wonderful, all true. You are more than a postgraduate student, but a colleague. I appreciate your contribution. What a wonderful comment. Thank you, Prof. You are indeed a role model. I wish to appreciate those that started the journey with me from the beginning. My, sec my primary and secondary school colleagues, particularly IGS 83, you are all recognized. I appreciate my colleagues who are my classmates both as undergraduate and postgraduate level at the University of Ibadan. To my colleagues from Command Secondary School, Ibadan, I'm grateful for your encouragement during those struggling years. My ambassador calling to serve my state of Oshun as the provost of Oshun State College Education in Laurago was the full support of Baba Chief Bisi Akande, CFR, the Aswaju of Laurago, Chief Ni Yakande, His Excellency Rauf Arabeshola, the former governor of the state of Oshun, and Minister of Interior, and Chief Mrs. Grace Sisilao Yekmonle, the former deputy governor. I humbly thank you, Sir Sama, for your acceptability and encouragement to render my humble service. I'm indeed grateful for the support provided me during my call to service by the Royal Fathers of Ilan Rogun and his environment. My special appreciation to the Oragon of Ila, the Oragon of Okela, 
the Asa on your fora, the Akas in your fora, the Obalo of Hila, and the Walloge of Kajola, Jabba, Kabi is you, Kare Pelori, Kibara Pelese, Esnoba Jacopo. The great contribution and support of the high chiefs in La, in La community cannot be overemphasized. The Ejemo, the Elemono, Obafa, Odosin, Balogun, other high chiefs, constituting member of Odelu, Omawa, and Egbe Yalode, the Action Council, Elders Forum, and OCD. I, I appreciate you all. I sincerely appreciate the teaching and all teaching staff of the OSCC La for making my work a lot easier during my sojourn in the, in the college as a provost. I want to thank the union very well for teaching me the art of Indonesian. Thank you and thank you. My, my heartfelt gratitude for the spiritual support and prayer of all members of SDA Church are listed. I also appreciate the ministry of all the church districts and conference pastors as listed. I said I appreciate the collaborative effort of my research team as listed. My sense, I send my appreciation to all my students, past and present. My special love and appreciation to our lovely blessed children, Queen Elizabeth Uluwashim, Princess Uluwato Yossi, the matron, and Prince Alexander Uluwase in Europe for their love, prayer, and support always. To my darling wife, my sweetheart, my indomie, my sweetest babe, my prayer warrior, integrity and intelligent personified, my jewel of inestimable worth, Jacqueline Uchechuko Yewale, thanks for your encouragement my, and constant prayers. I love you now and always. Conclusion. Plastic infection has such its role more on developing tropical countries, where the surge of infection has great impact on their socioeconomic development and human capital resources. For a nation to develop economically, there must be policy implementation to improve the overall health status of our citizens, which will invariably enhance our human capital resources. The Nigerian government, therefore, has the responsibility to deliberately integrate health financing intervention into all other programs. The nation's health care system must be well defined with clear set goals and objectives that must be cost effective and are able to produce results which are measurable. There are several health policies and plans in Nigeria. However, the cross of the matter is poor implementation due to lack of accountability and professionalism and leadership team. Hence, there should be more commitment on the part of the leaders to ensure continuous operation of these policies for, sus for sustainable performance to guarantee well-being of the citizens. Access to portable water to prevent waterborne diseases, good housing scheme, and well-planned environment in addition to availability of other basic amenities will further reduce contact with parasites and vectors. More so, appropriate legislation on drainage should be made in order to reduce vector mosquito breeding sites and contact with man. Successful implementation of functional health policies, operative legislation, and right attitude to early lifestyles and hygienic environment, as well as availability of basic amenities, will be a right approach to incapacitate the symbiotic association between the vector and parasite. However, any effort that will successfully separate the two culprits will be a difficult, a herculean task as separating a Siamese twins. Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, the task is done. I thank you all for, for your sincere attention. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, you can have your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, you will all agree with me. Please, let's be seated, please. One house. You all agree with me that our inaugural lecture of today did justice to this lecture. We try to monitor him from here and we discover that he proved to be a scientist because he stuck to the time. He started the delivery exactly 2.30, and less than an hour he completed. Congratulations. <laughs> Secondly, the topic is very, very relevant and contemporary. Uh, I want to say malaria is not even killing softly now. It's killing violently. <laughs> and so thank you very much for that. I want to encourage every one of us 
is well documented because I, I read through and I want to thank you very much for a very good job. Having said that, having successfully delivered the 44th inaugural lecture of today, and by the power conferred on me by the Board of Trustees and the Governing Council of this great university, I hereby officially admit you to the professorial seats as Professor of Paristology and Public Health Entomology of Babcock University. With all his rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Congratulations. <laughs> Why the lecture was going on, I, my attention was drawn to the fact that we have some important dignity here that came all the way from Ilaragon. Um, by the way, I'm from Ilaragon. I'm from Ilaragon. I'm from Ilaragon. So permit me for the conflict of interest, so that I can declare that right from the word go. Uh, we have with us this afternoon the current provost of Washington State College of Education in Laurangum, Professor Afolabi Jima Atanda. <laughs> Welcome, sir. I love be with you. And he didn't come alone. He came with the, the registrar and the boss of the university, of the <laughs> college. Thank you very much for coming. I just spotted also the president of a uh, Ashun Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, you're welcome, Pastor Dr. Adebomi. Uh, I'm a prince, and I can see the staff, so Moki Uriade Ati Joye, Thank you very much. For all others, I want to greet you, the academics that are here, the good Lord will bless you abundantly. Uh, having managed the time very well, and knowing fully well that some will be going very, very far in the matter of minutes, as the chair of this, I want to crave your indulgence to exercise a little patience as we invite my dear Ndomi. That's another one that I'm here today. <laughs> The Indomi of the inaugural lecturer, please keep on forward. <laughs> as well as the the royal children, please come forward and uh, take the picture with the inaugural lecturer. After that, quickly, in quick succession, I will want the members of the inaugural lecture planning committee to please join to have a, and then after which our provost and those that are with him to also come. So we have three, while all the others will be done outside. Thereafter, we are going to have a cocktail at the guest house for our very important dignities that are here. Thank you. So please, the member of the inaugural Planning Committee to come forward, particularly Emeritus Professor Omotosh, uh, Omalewa, who gave some dollars from France when he was the UNESCO. Uh, you need to be featured prominently here. Thank you. I think it's done. Quick, quick. Thank you. You can have your seat now. Okay, the inaugural lecture planning committee, please join. I think some of them are not here, so maybe the principal officers we have to join. Give me the name.
Thank you very much. I got the information right now that the former commissioner for tourism for Shun State is in the house. Tourism, former commissioner for tourism of Shun State, Dr. Oba Wale ADBC. Thank you very much. Forgive me that I didn't do that beforehand. I want to be able to return back to base or Shun State after my service here in Babco. Thank you very much. Now we want the provost, please. A uh, fellow colleague of mine, I want to thank you very much for coming. And your principal officers, please could you come over to take the picture with the inaugural lecturer. And this place will be true. So we have a special time for you to take the picture with the inaugural lecturer. Thank you very much. The principal officers, please don't go away. We are also going to take our own outside so that we can manage the time. Thereafter, we are going to have a cocktail at the, at the Babcock University Guest House. Please, let's proceed to the place after the pictures outside. Thank you very much. My job is done. Please, the MC, come and take over. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, for ably doing what you have just done, the public proclamation of uh, Professor Isaac Olainka Oyewale as, a, as professor of parasitology. Please forgive me. <laughs> and public health. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Daniel Aino for the closing prayer. Shall we all stand as we seek the Lord in prayer? Our God in heaven, we are grateful for today. Thank you because it was planned and you made it come to reality. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the strength you have given to the inaugural lecturer. Thank you for the speed at which he was able to deliver the message that he has for us. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for those that have come here from far and near. You brought them here safely. We are grateful. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that have come here, as they will be departing now, we pray, Lord, that your presence will go with them. Amen. We pray that we get to their destination safe and sound. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For those that have witnessed this program, we pray that it shall be well with us. Amen. We pray for Babcock community. We pray you take us to the next level. Amen. We pray for the inaugural lecturer. We pray take him to the next level. At the end of the day, take all the glory. Amen. For every food that will be eaten, we pray you sanctify it. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, just before we leave this auditorium, I'd like to announce that uh, there will be some form of refreshment for our very invited guests at the university guest house. It's towards the exit of the university, the main gate. May I also use this opportunity to inform us that the Babcock University post UTME screening will be holding next week, Monday 16th of October. And that will be the last screening exercise for this academic session. For those who have applied, who have not received their information for the screening, and those who have missed the previous screening exercises that we had, I'd like to inform the audience to help us to communicate to them that they could come on the 16th, 
next week, Monday, to participate in the exam. May I also use this opportunity to inform us that the resumption for the 2023-2024 academic session for fresh students is now 30th of this month. So if you have children or wards who are resuming this session, it is resumption is now on the 30th of this month. Thank you very much as we take the recession music. Recession is in the order, the reverse order that we came in. Please remain standing as the principal officers exit the auditorium to be followed by the family of the inaugural lecturer and the deans. The deans will follow. And thereafter, the family of the inaugural lecturers our Royal Highnesses, and then the heads of departments and directors, and every other person will join after them. Our Royal Highnesses, please. Can you go? You can go. Thank you very much. Have a very wonderful time.